All right, so our last video, the entire 20 or so minutes of it was devoted to one example. And now we're gonna move on to another example. It's gonna be a very similar process, um, but this is just give you more, more to go on. So um, another DE, we're looking at x squared plus one, y double prime minus six, y equals zero. You notice these uh, tend to be homogeneous equations and that's intentional um, because that equals zero there is what's going to allow us to use that identity property. Um, we're, also expand, uh, we're also looking for a solution about the ordinary point x equals zero here. Um, we're, we're just taking for granted that it's an ordinary point. We didn't prove that, but you easily could, right? We showed how to do that. Um, so once again, y is going to look like this. n equals zero to infinity. Uh, cn uh, x to the n y double prime. No, notice there's no y prime in this equation either, so I don't need to find that explicitly. y double prime is going to look like the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of uh, n times n minus 2 times cn x to the n minus 2. Okay, and as before, we're going to substitute um, both of these into our equation up there. So this is going to look like x squared plus 1 times y double prime, which we have right there, n equals 2 to infinity. Oops, sorry, that's supposed to be an n minus 1 right there, not an n minus 2. Um, n times n minus 1, c n x to the n minus 2, minus 6y, so that's going to look like minus 6 uh, times this guy, n equals 0 to infinity, c n x to the n. Okay, same idea as before. Our goal, our first goal is to combine all of this into a single series. So what I'm going to do is distribute this series into the set of parentheses. Um, I'm going to first multiply it by this x squared right there, and then I'm going to multiply it by this one right here. And in the, for the sake of, you know, saving us some time, I'm going to do an extra step there and bear in mind that that x squared will actually distribute into here and uh, multiply with this guy. So what's that going to look like? When I multiply x squared times this series, it's going to take that n, x to the n minus 2 and turn it, turn it into an x to the n. So I'm going to get n times n minus 1, uh, c n x to the n. And then I have this plus 1 times that series, which is just going to replicate that series. n equals 2 to infinity, n times n minus 1, c n x to the n minus 2, and then this minus 6, I can bring the 6 in there, so that's going to look like minus uh, n equals 0 to infinity of 6 c n x to the n. Okay, so now we have three summations that we have to deal with, but the process of combining them is the same as what we did before. We need two things. We need all of the x's all of the first terms in each of these series to start in the same place. And we also need all of the indices to start in the same place. So that first condition, let's, let's think of what the first term in each series is going to be. <clears throat> um, plugging a two in for the n here, I have an x squared term that we're starting off with here. Plugging a two in here, I have an x to the zero term. And over here, I also have an x to the zero term because we're starting at n equals zero. So that means I'm gonna have constants and x terms both appearing in these two series that are not appearing in this series here. I need to pull each of those out from those two series. Um, let's think about what that's going to look like. Need a little bit more space here. So um, starting with this guy, what's its constant term gonna look like? Plug in a two, I get two times one times c2 x to the zero. So that's gonna look like two c2. Now. Counting our way up, plug in a 3. 3 times 2, which is 6. Um, uh, Cn, so that's C3, x to the first power, so x. Okay, and then we know the next term will be an x squared term, which we want to leave in there because that's where this series starts. Over here, what's going to happen? I have uh, 0 that I'm plugging in first. So plugging in that zero um, is going to give me 6c0x um, 
to the zero, so that's just 6c0. And remember, there's a minus here, so that's minus 6c0. And then I can plug in a 1, I get 6c1x, so minus 6c1x. All right, and then I have these series still kind of hanging out there, so this is plus n equals 2 to infinity, n times n minus 1, um, c n x to the n plus n equals 2 to infinity n. Oh, I, I, let me back that up, actually. This is now 4, because we've used the 2 and the 3 to pull out those first two terms right there, so we're starting at n equals 4. n minus 1, c n x to the n minus 2, and then minus our last series, n equals 0 to infinity. Oh, rushing, rush, rushing again, so it's not starting at 0, it's starting at 2 now, because we've used the first two terms, 6 c n x to the n. Okay, so now all three of these series, you can check, start with an x squared term. That was our first goal. Now we want to re-index so that they all have the same uh, starting value. Um, so I'm going to do that, but in addition to that, I'm also going to combine like terms here because I have a couple of constants and I have a couple of x terms. So combining my constants, I'm going to have 2c2 minus 6c0. Okay. Combining my x terms, I'm going to have plus 6c3 minus 6c1x. Okay. Now, to re-index, um, let's, let's see what we would want to do. So I'm going to try to change this n equals 4 into an n equals 2, since that would match with both of these guys. In order to do that, I need to subtract 2 from my index, which means I'll need to add 2 to every n appearing in this a uh, little formula right here. So that's going to give me this plus sum from n equals 2 to infinity n, n minus 1 c n x to the n plus n equals 2 now to infinity. Add 2 to all of my n's. So I have n plus 2 n plus 1 now c n plus 2 x to the n minus that last series, n equals 2 to infinity, 6cnx to the n. Okay? So now we've done everything that we needed to do to these series so that we can combine them all. Finally, after all that work, we're going to have 2c2 minus 6c0 plus 6c3 minus 6c1x plus one big series running from n equals 2 to infinity, and combining all of these like terms, uh, what's that going to look like? n times n minus 1, cn, plus n plus 2, n plus 1, cn plus 2, minus 6cn, x to the n. And this is where we want to use our identity property because this, according to our DE, should equal zero. Okay? So from our identity property, here's the constant term and here's the x term in this series. Everything after that is x squared or higher degree. Um, so both of these coefficients need to equal zero. 2c2 minus 6c0 needs to equal zero. And 6c3 minus 6c1 needs to equal 0. Together, these imply that c2 is equal to 3c0, and c3 is equal to c1. Okay, So that gives us a way of putting those two coefficients, c2 and c3, in terms of the first two coefficients, c0 and c1. Um, and then we have this guy. So we're also going to have n and notice I can combine some like terms here. So if I distributed this n in, n squared minus uh, n, and that's a cn term. I also have a minus 6cn here. Okay, plus n plus 2, n plus 1, 
cn plus 2 by our identity property. That should equal 0. This guy factors. If you'll notice, that's equal to n minus 3 times n plus 2. So the goal, again, is to solve for cn plus 2. And in doing that, I would subtract this term over and then divide by that coefficient. But notice there's an n plus 2 in both of these that will cancel each other out when I do that. So this is going to look like um, negative n minus 3 over n plus 1 cn. There's my recurrence relation. Okay, so now we can start finding coefficients. C, C0 and C1 disappeared from this, so once again those become parameters. I'm going to have C0 equals C0, C1 equals C1, and then C2, as we showed up here, is equal to 3 C0, C3 is equal to C1. So, so far we've only gone through up to this point here. Now we can start using our recurrence relation. And an important thing to note about this recurrence relation is if you look at the coefficients that we're using going back to here, they start at when n equals 2. So we don't really start using this until n is greater than or equal to 2. That means I'm starting at n equals 2 here. Okay, Plugging n equal, equals 2 into my recurrence relation will give me c4. And that's equal to negative n minus 3. So that's 4 minus 3. I'm oh, sorry, uh, 2 minus 3. So negative, negative 1 over 2 plus 1. That's 3 times C2. But C2 is equal to 3 C0. So plugging that in here, I'm going to get some cancellation. And this just becomes negative negative 1 or positive 1 times C0. So C4 is equal to C0. Okay, C5 is going to come from plugging n equals 3 in. And so for that, for C5, uh, we're looking at um, negative uh, 3 minus 3 from my recurrence relation. So that's 0 over 3 plus 1. That's 4. And that's going to look like C3. C3, though, is the same thing as C1 although that doesn't really matter because the whole thing is being multiplied by zero. So I get a zero there. Now let's look at n equals four. That's equal to c, or that gives me c6, which is equal to uh, negative one over five c4, which is the same thing as negative one-fifth. Remember, we found c4 up here to be the same as c naught, c naught. Once again, we're gonna take this a ways down. So we're, we want to make sure we're getting a lot of coefficients to kind of end up with enough terms for our answer. n equals 5 is going to give me c7 here, which is going to be equal to negative 2 over 6, uh, c5. But c5 is equal to 0. And at this point, you should start to see a pattern that we're going to use. It's going to be really useful. Um, starting where we started this list up here from n equals 2, we're going to alternate between non-zero and zero terms. Non-zero, zero. So I'm going to keep that pattern in mind just to make the rest of the work a little faster. n equals 6 will give me c8. That's equal to negative 3 over 7. c6, which we found up here, negative times negative will give me positive. So this is equal to 3 times 1 over 7 times 5, c naught. And there's going to be a pattern that starts emerging here. Once again, I'm not doing the multiplication because I want the pattern to be um, showing itself. We already know that this is alternating between 0 and non-zero, so this next term will give me a 0. n equals 8 should give me c10, and that's going to be equal to... Uh, let's see, plugging an 8 in for my recurrence relation will give me negative... 5 over 9, uh, c8, but we found c8 up here, so this is the same thing as negative 5 times 3 times 1 over 9 times 7 times 5, c0. Okay, so now 
um, I think we have enough coefficients that we can find our two solutions that we're looking for. Let's start with uh, y1. Remember what we do is we set c0 equal to 1 and c1 equal to 0. What happens when we do that? Well, in that case, <clears throat> y1 will be equal to c0, which, or sorry, which is 1, so that's equal to 1. Plugging 1 in for that, c0 gives me plus 3, and that's the c2 coefficient, which means this corresponds to my x squared term. Then I jump down here, c0 is equal to 1, so that's plus 1 x to the fourth power. And then down here, minus 1 fifth x to the sixth power. And then here, I'm going to have uh, plus uh, 3 times 1 over 7 times 5, x to the 8th, and then I'm going to have minus this guy down here, 5 times 3 times 1 over 9 times 7 times 5, x to the 10th, and then this just keeps going, right? You're going to have the, this um, whole series appearing there. So there's one solution. For the other solution, set C not equal to 0 and C1 equal to 1, and something interesting happens here. We're looking for C1s because all of our C0 coefficients are going to disappear. They're going to go to 0. C1 shows up for the first time right here, and that's my the coefficient of my x term. So C1 equals 1. That means that my first term is just 1x or x. Um, and then C1 makes another appearance here where it also just C3 is just equal to C1. Um, so that means I'm going to have 1x cubed. But then everywhere else a C1 would have occurred turns into a 0. So that means every term after this is a 0 and there's nothing more to write. So whereas we had a series here, even though we could think of this as a series, if we just say plus 0, plus 0, plus 0 on indefinitely, it's also just the same thing as this cubic polynomial. So this gives us our two solutions. And once again, if we wanted the general solution, which it's not asking for, but we could write, it's just y equals, um, I'm writing c naught y1 because that c naught corresponds to the fact that you know, we use the parameter c naught to come up with this solution, uh, plus c1 y2, where again, the y1 and the y2 had to have been stated up here for this to make any sense, okay? So we do have one more example that we're going to do, and I'm going to reserve that for our final video.